Okay, everyone, we've just gone past two o'clock, so we'll get started. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your day to attend today's seminar. Um, it's great to see that we've had about 120 registrations for the event, so it's a really great turnout. As you will have seen on the invite, today's seminar is all about the Healthy Choices Policy Directive for Health Services. My name is Grace Henderson, and I'm a Nutrition Policy Advisor at the Healthy Eating Advisory Service. And today I'm joined by Kelly Neville and Rita Alvaro, who are both Senior Policy Officers for Nutrition at the Department of Health. I'm also joined by my colleague Bridget Anwar, who is also a Nutrition Policy Advisor at the Healthy Eating Advisory Service. Now, we've alloc allocated some time at the end of the seminar to answer any questions you have. So if you have any, please type them in the chat function, which you should be able to access through the little speech bubble, which is at the top of the MS Teams um, window. And the recording of this seminar will also be made available uh, for those who are unable to attend. So before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people as the traditional owners of the land Nam that I'm presenting to you on today. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be joining us today. I would also like to acknowledge the important contribution our First Peoples make in caring for country and sustainable food systems. So in today's session, we're going to cover the following topics. Firstly, we'll give a bit of a background and context into the policy. We'll go into the details of the new policy. Um, we'll talk about the monitoring and reporting requirements, as well as the implementation support that is available to organisations. And as I said before, we'll then have some time at the end to run through any questions that you have. I'll pass it over to Kelly. Great. Thanks, Grace. Thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm going to give a bit of an overview, as Grace said, on I get the background and context to um, to this new policy that um, was introduced this month. Um, but before I do, I just wanted to give, I guess, a bit of a shout out to all of you out there um, and just acknowledge I guess to date your efforts and leadership in implementing our healthy choices policy and our healthy food and drinks policy across our settings and um, and yeah all the efforts and, and outcomes we've had to date with this work. Um, the new policy whilst it might cause some extra work for us which is always a good thing um, and we'll have some extra reporting, reporting requirements which Rita will cover later. Um, it on the other hand, I think it's really going to help support our efforts and, and support the work you're doing in your organisations and getting getting buy-in and support from leadership. So, and I think, um, yeah, I think having having the, the new policy and the reporting requirements will really shine a light on our collective statewide efforts, um, which will be really great to see. So, um, yeah, so I guess as um, a lot of you already know, um, the Victorian government, the Premier made an election commitment for all of um, for foods available in our hospitals and um, aged care facilities to be fresh, healthy and locally sourced. And part of that election commitment was also to mandate um, new health and quality food standards in health services. So a um, this new healthy choices policy for health services is part of that review. It was a recommendation of that review. Um, and the Premier announced it back in April. Um, another key, if you could just um, look to the next slide, please, Grace. Um, another key, really important um, policy that underpins and gives us imperative to implement healthy choices is our, our Victorian Cancer Plan. So um, all health services and, and the government have a um, target, a responsibility to meet this cancer plan. And in that cancer plan, um, there's a target that we would like to see 80% of our public health services meeting the healthy choices for retail and vending. And that includes all retail and vending so the commercial outlets as well as in-house. So that gives us a really good le lever to all collectively work towards achieving that important cancer plan target. To the next slide. 
and many more policies. You guys would all be quite familiar with um, these, I'd imagine, but just a bit of a reminder, I guess, um, that prevention focuses really heavily um, in these. We all know our Victorian Public Health and Wellbeing Plan, which is, is a great public health plan that requires um, all of our funded agencies to work towards actions and one of those actions is um, accelerating um, healthy eating, healthy food and drink policies in our settings. Um, so that's a responsibility also for local councils and um, and health promotion, uh, community health as well in their IHP plans. But also um, there's some key health service hospital documents that um, also feature prevention. So on the left there, the Health 2040 strategy, that's um that's a key strategy document that outlines the priorities for our public health services. And in there, there is a priority um, for health services to be geared um, as much towards prevention as they are towards um, healthcare um, and for them to support the health and wellbeing of communities. So that's actually a good document to look at um, if you haven't seen that and, and you need to advocate to leadership more. Um, the green document in the middle, um, that's a statement of priorities. That's sort of like the funding and service agreement, I guess, that each health service has with our minister. And um, that's also has opportunities to, um, to have a focus on prevention as a priority action in, in those statement of priorities. Um, and the other document, which is, isn't pictured there, of course, is the policy and funding guidelines for health services. So that's being updated at the moment. And this Healthy Choices Policy Directive will be, um, will be noted in, that, in the hospital's policy and funding guidelines for health services. Um, if you could just go to the next slide, thanks. And lots more, lots and lots of, of rationale for why we should be doing this work. Um, I'm probably preaching to the converted. Uh, we all know that healthy food and drink supply policies um, in public settings are really important to support staff and Victorians health and wellbeing. Healthcare services as as key health organisations. I guess um, it's it's our core. It really is our core work to be promoting health as well as caring for health. Um, there is a, a joint. All of the national health ministers back in 2020 actually um, made quite a, a strong joint call to action um, for health services to lead in um, in this space, including going sugary drinks free. So that's a good um, a good little statement. If you to look up the websites are down there. If you haven't um, already seen that joint call to action. Uh, as well, the World Health Organization, this is a great, it's quite a great resource actually. The World Health Organization recently um, released an action framework for developing and implementing public food procurement policies for healthy diets. Um, so that's a key piece of evidence, um, as well as a useful resource to look at. And I guess rationale for us strengthening the healthy choices policy is um, we acknowledge, as I said, that there's great effort happening and great leadership already happening out there in the health services in implementing healthy choices. And we we really um, thought it was definitely time to kind of accelerate and support the, those existing efforts. Um, whilst there is some great examples of, um, of uh, implementation out there, we have done quite a few evaluations over, over the 10 years that we've had healthy choices. <laughs> Um, voluntarily out there um, that have shown that the intake uptake is a little bit low and, and could be could be enhanced. So the review we did just recently, um, I think reported about a 40, 49% of health services had met healthy choices. And we did a review back in 2015 that also showed quite a, a high level. I think it was 50 to 60% of foods and drinks in retail outlets were still red despite all of our, our hard efforts over the years to, um, to work towards implementing them. And um, in a lot of these reviews and a lot of um, consultation that HEAS has done with the sector, having a voluntary policy has been identified as a key barrier. Um, the nature, the, the voluntary nature of the policy has been identified as a key barrier for implementation. 
Um, and having a mandatory policy, um, conversely, a lot of people have identified that that would be a, a great enabler um, to implementation. So, and another reason we um, have implemented, mandated the policy is because we know it can be done. Um, Victoria, whilst we I reckon we're, we're, we're great, we're brilliant, we're leading the way, um, there have been some other states that have already mandated their policy and extended it to sugary drinks and, um, and they got really, really um, high uptake and success in a, a short period of time, you know, within the, the couple of years that they mandated. So we know it can be done. And we also know that um, some of our health services out there have already extended the healthy choices to go sugary drink free. Um, so I guess that was another reason why we um, thought it was time to, to um, make it a formal policy. So, um, Grace, yeah, thank you. So a bit about the new policy. Um, Bridget and Rita will go into more detail about this. Um, so it's based on our Healthy Choices policy guidelines um, for health services that you guys would all be very familiar with. Um, it was announced in April and we've just released the two pager policy directive just last week, a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's also a lot more, there'll be a lot more detail coming up on the Health Eating Advisory website with about the policy too. So um, make sure to, to check that out in, a, in the coming week. The policy, the scope of the policy, it includes in-house managed retail outlets. It also includes um, health services that might offer their patient menus for staff and visitors to purchase from, which is quite common in smaller health services. Um, the policy covers all vending machines, so whether they are managed and owned by the health service or privately um, commercially contracted or owned, and it covers all staff and visitor catering. And so that's whether or not it's sourced in-house or whether it's sourced from a, a commercial cafe. Um, so that's the scope of the policy and it applies to all Victorian public health services. So that could include acute hospitals, it could include um, an aged care facility, it could include an integrated community health service, any service within a, those 86 health service organisations. Um, private and commercially managed cafes are still strongly encouraged to implement this policy um, and continue implementing the policy guidelines um, currently. So I guess this is just a first step um, as far as they go. Um, the difference between, I guess, this new policy and the current Healthy Choices Guidelines is, is a, no, a new requirement for zero red drinks rather than, um, the, I think it's, cur it's currently up to 20%. So that's the new requirement. The policy will be phased in over the next two years. So there'll be plenty of time to, um, to implement and to meet this, the, the new policy requirement. And there will be monitoring and reporting and Rita will talk a little bit more about that. Thanks, so I'll hand over to Bridget, who will talk a bit more about the nitty gritty of the, the, the green, amber, red of the new policy directive. Great, thanks Kelly. Um, as Kelly mentioned, we'll talk through a bit now of the detail, which I'm sure many of you are already familiar with, um, and also discuss how we can support you at HEAS. So this initial slide here um, explains the, the requirements of the policy directive. Um, this detail can be found on both the Department of Health and HEAS websites. Um, and just to go through what these requirements are. So they're mandatory requirements for all vending machines and in-house managed um, retail food outlets. So food must be provided in line with the Healthy Choices Food and Drink Classification Guide and the policy guidelines for hospitals and health services. So that is that 50% of the food available and displayed is green and no more than 20% of it is red. As Kelly mentioned also, there is no sale of sugary, um, that is red category drinks, and drinks that are classified as green um, need to comprise at least 50% of the total proportion um, of drinks displayed and promoted. And in addition to um, the display and promotion of 50% green drinks, drinks containing artificial and intense sweeteners, so those are amber drinks, they must comprise no more than 20% of the total proportion of drinks available and displayed. And as per the current um, guidelines, both food and drinks that are classified as red, they cannot be promoted or advertised. 
a bit of detail on here as well about catering. Um, so again, catering food and drink must be provided in line with the healthy choices policy. Um, and there is the additional requirement that no red or food or drinks um, are provided via catering. Uh, and the majority of the food and drink provided is green. We also encourage health services to have free drinking water readily available. So that might come via water fountains um, or jugs of tap water at functions. As Kelly said, um, all health services are strongly encouraged to apply this policy to all retail outlets, um, and this is in line with the Victorian Cancer Plan um, that at least 80% of hospitals and health services um, have compliant machines by 2024. Thanks, Grace. So a very brief overview of what we mean when we talk about green, amber and red. Um, so these are the relevant classifications as outlined in the Healthy Choices Guidelines. Food and drinks can be classified into the three categories. So green are those that are the healthiest choices and they're usually good sources of important nutrients. Um, our amber options are those that should be consumed in moderation. They may provide some valuable nutrients, but they can also contribute to excessive energy intake. And then finally, there are our red options. Um, these are not essential in a balanced diet and do contribute to excessive energy intake. I'll pass to you, Rita. Uh, thank you, Kelly, and thank you, Bridget, for giving a great overview of the policy directive. I'm going to move to talk a little bit about monitoring and reporting. The monitoring and reporting requirements that are set out in the policy directive will enable the department to monitor implementation of this policy by health services over time. There's a few time points that I will talk about. Firstly, in early 2022, we'll require that health services submit information about the number and types of retail food outlets, vending machines and catering to the Department of Health. So firstly, information about the number and types of retail outlets and vending machines will give us a better statewide picture of the current situation. For example, at the moment, we believe that there will be hospitals that are more likely to have retail outlets and aged care services are less likely to have retail outlets, but we, we don't really have this statewide data. So this will give us a better picture of the current situation. We will also ask a little bit about catering to get a better understanding of the catering practices of your health services. Although what we ask about catering will be a lot less detailed. So we might ask you some tick box questions, for example, about whether you have an organisational policy that supports healthy catering. Um, at this point in time, we will also ask for a couple of key contacts. Um, you might have seen the policy directive, which, which states that accountability for this policy should be allocated by health services at the relevant executive level. So we'll be asking for your executive level contact, but we'll also ask you to nominate a key contact person for implementing this policy at your service. This information that we're going to be collecting in early 2022 will then inform the annual reporting required from September next year. So by the 30th of September, 2022, will require that your service submits an annual report against the drinks target set out earlier. And this report will include food checker assessments of the drinks available through your retail outlets and vending machines. So this time frame of September 2022 gives your service plenty of time for phasing in the removal of red drinks. By the 30th of September, 2023, then we'll require your service to submit an annual report against both food and drinks targets, and again, include food checker assessments as supporting evidence. And again, we'll ask you a little bit less detail about your catering practices. So again, this two year time frame will give your service plenty of time to meet both the food and drink targets, with some services potentially choosing to meet these targets at an earlier time frame. So those dates of 30th of September 2022 and 2023 have been set, but further dates will be set thereafter. I'll just briefly 
reinforce the importance of using the HES food checker tool. So the food checker tool can be used to conduct baseline assessments as well as being used to conduct these annual assessments that we'll be requiring. And that's because Food Checker is really an ideal quality improvement tool because it can not only be used for reporting, but it can also assist your service with identifying areas for improvement and making healthy changes and monitoring your progress over time. And we'll be working with the Health Eating Advisory Service to have reporting mechanisms integrated as much as possible into the Food Checker tool so that it can be used for both self-monitoring as well as reporting. Just to let you know that we will provide you further guidance and tools for monitoring and reporting early in 2022. So that's a summary of the monitoring and reporting, and I'll hand you back over to Bridget to talk about the support that's available to implement this policy. Thanks, Rita. Thanks. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, if you have questions as they're coming up, please um, put them in the chat function. It's at the top of your screen there um, and we have some time to answer those shortly. So to give you some um, overview of who we are at HEAST, the Healthy Eating Advisory Service. So we're, def uh, we're funded by the Victorian Government and delivered by Nutrition Australia's Victoria Division as part of Victoria's statewide prevention effort. So we aim to support organisations to implement the Victorian government's healthy eating policies and guidelines, and we work to create an organisational culture of healthy, healthy eating, where healthier food and drinks are provided and promoted, and the provision of unhealthier food and drinks is reduced. We support um, organisations with the services listed on the screen. Thanks, Grace. Um, so many of you will be familiar with um, HESA's online tool, Food Checker, um, which is what Rita just mentioned then. And Food Checker um, supports organisations to promote and provide healthier menus, products and recipes. Uh, and Food Checker will assist you to classify your products and keep track of these assessments as well. So again, as Rita mentioned, you can use Food Checker to conduct baseline assessments. Um, these will identify um, and inform you of what you're doing well and also any areas of improvement. And another great use of Food Checker, um, it can be used to model proposed menus and recipes um, to determine how these may be classified and how your menu may look with these changes. So as mentioned again, Food Checker will continue to be a key way of monitoring and documenting your progress and communicating this with your team, um, with your wider organisation and with us at HEAS as well. And it'll also be an important tool in meeting the requirements of the policy directive. So an important step when using Food Checker um, and one that we often discuss is about centralising all your assessments into one account. So unfortunately, we can't transfer Food Checker assessments between an account, so it's important to keep your assessments in one, one place. Most um, organisations and health services will already have a Food Checker account set up. Um, but if you would like to um, confirm that you have an account or you've forgotten your password, um, just be in touch with us because we can let you know if you have an account or reset your password. Um, retailers are also encouraged um, to set up food checker accounts to assess their food and drink provision. And again, centralising all your assessments in one retailer account is recommended. To just give you some brief overview of the different ways that we can use Food Checker. Uh, the top left function there is for conducting um, overall assessments of your menu um, via catering, um, retail or in-house um, patient menus, as well as assessing a drink, a drinks fridge. So it's specifically for assessing multiple items um, and it will also provide you with recommendations and modifications. The recipe um, function there, so this is where you can assess a single recipe and we find that to be the easiest way to assess recipes. To assess your vending machine, um, that is the bottom left option there um, and that will assist you in reporting for your vending machine for the requirements of the policy directive. And then finally, searching and assessing products. So that's for anything that's not already contained within our database. Um, and you can manually add in the nutrition information and detail that you have to receive the relevant classification for that item. 
Uh, so the, it's important to note as well that all the information contained in Food Checker and the classifications that you receive from Food Checker, these are all found, um, this information is all from the Healthy Choices Classification Guide, which is a great resource to understand how and why things are classified. Thank you. Um, so assist, to assist in implementation, HEAS have developed a, a number of key resources um, to support you and your health service. So you can find these on our website. Um, we have planograms um, which have been developed for vending machines to, de to demonstrate how machines can be displayed to meet the requirements of the policy directive. So this is a great tool to understand the types of drinks and snacks that can fit into your machine. And we have also added resources for the provision of drinks um, outlining what is included in each of the green, amber and red categories. Um, you may also be familiar with two explainer videos that we've developed um, which support implementation staff and leadership. And these are useful tools to explain the policy directive um, and we encourage you to share them with the relevant people within your organisation. Keep an eye on the website as well, on the HEAST website. We have a number of um, new resources and support that will be made available there in the coming weeks and months. In terms of additional support, um, we are very lucky at HEAST to have support from Alfred Health and Western District Health Service as well, and they can each support you with different elements of implementation. So at Alfred Health, um, we have Kia Noble and Angie Beeson who are helping um, Metro hospitals with a number of key elements of implementation of the Healthy Choices Guidelines. So Alfred Health can support you with policy development, gaining management support, developing a catering process and guidelines, as well as supporting your private retailers to implement the Healthy Choices Guidelines. Western District Health Service, led by John Headley there, they can offer you food service, um, unique food service staff support and insight into boosting the green options in your health service. And they can support you um, in supporting your food service staff, sharing and discussing their green recipe booklet, assisting with menu design, and also with communicating and engaging with your food service staff. So feel free to be in touch with them. Um, they are more than happy to help and excellent resources. In terms of additional support, um, feedback we often receive is around um, sourcing the products that you need to make a Healthy Choices compliant menu. Um, so in the coming months, you will see a high proportion of Healthy Choices products classified, um, which will be available via the Health Share catering list. And a focus has been given to the hard to find products, and you will now be able to identify um, items that have been classified as green and amber. To the final slide there, um, there is a picture of Grace and myself and our relevant emails um, and contact address. Please don't hesitate to be in touch. Um, we're really looking forward to helping you through your implementation at your health service of the Healthy Choices Guidelines. Um, so please be in touch with us. We'd love to help.